What is going on guys? Judo Sloth here and welcome to today's video. Today we have a sponsored video for Might and Magic Elemental Guardians. Thank you so much to Ubisoft for sponsoring today's video. I've always enjoyed games like this and when the opportunity came along to bring this to you guys, there was nothing going to stop me and what we're going to do is bring you a bit of a beginner's guide for this because any of you guys that do want to download this, there is a link down in the description of this video right at the top actually for iOS and for Android Play Store. Make sure to go ahead and click that link to get the game itself and you guys will want to know exactly what it's all about and how to go about starting to play it. So that's why we're bringing you the beginner's guide and let's get into it. So basically guys when you start you will be given a creature, one of your guardians themselves and there is mine. We're going to start our first battle using this little guy and basically I'll show you the tutorial for a little bit here just so you can get a feel of exactly how the game works and then we'll go through different aspects and I'll give you my take on exactly what you want to be prioritizing when you first start the game. So you can see that each creature has a number of skills and you can basically time those skills and use them at set points of a battle in order to take down your opponent. Now in this case it is simply a one on one but once I get past that stage I then have multiple monsters. Now don't worry guys the creatures you will be able to get more yourself as well. That's where the strategy comes into this game. You can really pull together a team and then you can also upgrade your monsters. We will be showing you that as well. All of your creatures can be specialized exactly how you want. Now basically guys you have preset teams as well. You can choose whatever you want and easily flip between them. So once I had done a couple of attacks there I actually was able to attack myself with a staff and that increases the damage as well so you can actually get some special attributes onto your creatures from that and you'll see from completing that level we actually managed to unlock a support creature now that basically means that I can heal my own creatures you can see that there are different abilities as well so fire is greater than earth which is greater than air greater than water which then gives you strength against fire so kind of like that circle you'll have been familiar with this sort of stuff before guys but basically you want to use your creatures to your advantage and take down the enemy that is weakest to you now this is the glyph management system this is the section where you can attach these to your creatures in order to make them stronger now clearly you want to be attaching your strongest glyphs to your strongest creatures now you can also build up sets in order to have different attributes and everything in this game which i really like is that you can actually upgrade and customize anything. You can put the glyphs on whatever creature you want, you can build sets, and basically there's different rarities of it as well. And as you can see, you can also upgrade them. Now it does cost you, and obviously this is where throughout the game, your management of these resources is going to be effective. That's what we're covering in this guide for you. But also, you're going to have to put a bit of time and thought into where you want to upgrade this. So you'll see the higher you get, Get, the more cost it is to upgrade your glyph and there's also a risk of you not getting that so I really push that one to level 10 just to show you guys however what you would want to do is manage your resources effectively you'd probably want to push them separately up to say level 5 set yourself a little bit of a target once you've got all of your glyphs to that level then you would press on from there because it's a lot more expensive for upgrades that are relatively the same now every time you log into the game guys make sure you're checking a few different things one of them is the achievements throughout the game you have daily missions which you can complete so just checking that screen will make sure that you're getting extra loot extra items that is going to help you with that progress again that's part of what this video is going to show you basically giving you a bit of an insight into this game showing you exactly where you can get it from but also I wanted to bring a little bit of a guide for you so that you knew exactly what you were doing so this is massive guys make sure you're checking them achievements a lot of them you will do you know without even thinking of it 
What is really cool is once you get to level 6, there's also a competitive element with other players. So let's do a match within the arena. Then what we're going to do is show you exactly how you would upgrade your creatures and then show you a little bit of the story mode as well, which we kind of touched on at the start of the video. I'll show you once I've progressed a little bit. So you can see the arena, you basically get an entire different level of currency from that. Now, I've only done a couple of battles myself in the arena. I haven't really plucked up the courage or upgraded my creatures to the stage where I feel comfortable going into the arena and really pressing it. But it's basically there's different leagues. And that's what's really cool as well. There's different ways that you can play the game. If you're one that really puts yourself against others, you can press yourself in that area. Whereas you also have that aspect of being able to go through the story mode and basically upgrading your creatures that way if that's all you want to do so let's set ourselves up here I actually only have three creatures I'm going up against someone that has four so I'm actually giving away a slot here but let's get into the battle this guy actually has four of the same creature I'm pretty sure he must like that one but as you can see mine off quite a bit further upgraded than his and I know that my glyphs within this as well are heavily upgraded now moving on to the attacks, there's different ways you can do it. You can see the times two button at the bottom that I've put on, that just makes things a little bit quicker. You can go to times three, you can also auto run it as well so that your creatures will just do whatever they want to do. A lot of the time they're reasonably smart guys, I have been testing with it, but basically you're always going to have a better shot at controlling it manually. Now in this case, there's not a lot of advantage for me in terms of what to pick. However, what I would advise is almost ganging up on one creature. What you've got to think is if you have four creatures attacking yours, then they're going to be taking more damage. If you can gang up on one of them and take that out, then there's no coming back from that. They really, you're limiting the amount of times they can shoot. Now, obviously, there are hundreds of creatures in this game. There's different ones that have different skills. You can see my support healer there is able to help revive my team almost and keep them alive whilst I'm able to just keep chipping away at the opponent and ultimately take them down for the victory. So my first match in the arena is a victory and you can see that I get some rewards for that. So I get part of that currency which is used to upgrade things but also I have a separate currency here which you can use in a separate shop in order to buy things. Now there are teams within the game as well. You can you know team up with other players as well and kind of get to get along in that regard there are um the global elements of chat where you can discuss strategy with other players but you can see in the shop there there were a number of items to purchase some of them being stones now the stones is how you unlock more creatures let's go ahead and have a look at some of them so i get the goblin hunter and then the next one i get the goblin trickster so a couple of similar creatures there but as you can see, there's different ones and there's different um, stones that you can put together to make others. But obviously, the more up the system you get in terms of the stones, you will see that there's kind of epic and legendary ones as well. You get stronger monsters from that. And again, you want to prioritize probably your strongest monsters, but you can read. Oh, I really like this guy, the skeleton warrior. When I unlocked him, I thought he looked pretty cool and he is pretty strong as well. But this one is one of my favorites and it's my heavily upgraded monster at the moment, the fawn. What I'm going to do is show you exactly how you would upgrade this. Basically, as you complete the story missions, you get different potions and you can get that from loot as well. So from the chest here, I actually upgrade and get a couple of potions. I'm going to use that to upgrade one of my monsters. As you can see, now you can upgrade their skill set. You have the glyphs that you put in that you can upgrade. Again, there's so much customization with it. But let's go ahead and upgrade it to maxed level 20. Now, in order to get higher than that, you have to evolve your creatures. But I'm going to put a ton in and take that maxed level. All right, guys, let's show you a little bit of the story mode so you can see some battles in action here in order to finish off the video. So I am up to the Mystic Forest. There's a bunch of different levels, which obviously you can progress through, and I am currently doing it on normal. Once you've done that, you can go back through it on advanced, 
and then Nightmare once you really have your creatures upgraded. Again, there's different ways to play. I've actually popped it on auto for a little bit here, which is quite good to just kind of farm in the background. You don't have to be as involved with the battle. Your creatures are generally quite smart and will pick wise moves. And you can do that in order to use up your energy, farm some extra loot from doing these battles in the story mode, in order to then upgrade your glyphs, your creatures, unlock new ones. Obviously, that's how you progress in the game. So you can use it on auto, but when you get into them harder matches, when you're in the arena for example and going up against real people or against a boss as in this case you might want to switch that auto off so that you can really plan your attacks a little bit more you can see here that i'm actually up against a green dragon that's an earth dragon so if i had a team full of fire type creatures that might be better against this dragon now they're doing all right at the moment just kind of chipping away at it and a lot of the time what you find is it's really using them creatures in combination in order to get the most things so you can see that i've decreased the dragon's defense and attack that's the little icons at the top there and it's going to keep on chipping away at it let's go ahead and actually choose our skills and attacks for the final part here so i appreciate the webcams kind of in the way a little bit but you can see the skills on the bottom right that's basically where i can choose each attack you can kind of use the heal as well from my support troop and basically you have the stronger attacks where it takes a little bit of a while in order to get that back up. It might take a couple of attacks. And you can see on the far left of the screen, I've now unlocked the staff. I'm going to use that as a bit of a heavy hitter. And as you can see, the dragon's going to go down in a second. Let's go ahead and maybe just go for the finishing blow. Take it out. And that is one more boss complete in the story mode. Like I said, you can progress right the way through that. But that's going to wrap it up for this beginner's guide. If you're going to go ahead and dive into it, make sure to let me know in the comments. Maybe you already play Might and Magic Elemental Guardians. Let me know. And again, thank you so much to Ubisoft for sponsoring this video. That wraps it up for this one. I've been your host, Judo Sloth. And until next time, peace out.